we have come to the end of reading through the Old Testament a book, a chapter of each book. Um, and we like with like you well know, you also got some of the Apocrypha in there as well. So this is our last book. It's Malachi, and hopefully you're you're joyful at reaching the end and excited about something new. Let's let's get into scripture. Malachi chapter 3 from the New Living Translation. Look, I am sending my messenger and he will prepare the way before me. Then the Lord you are seeking will suddenly come to his temple, the messenger of the covenant whom you look for so eagerly is surely coming, says the Lord of heaven's armies. But who will be able to endure it when he comes? Who will be able to stand and face him when he appears? For he will be like a blazing fire that refines metal, or like a strong soap that bleaches clothes. He will sit like a refiner of silver, burning away the dross. He will purify the Levites, refining them like gold and silver so that they may once again offer acceptable sacrifices to the Lord. Then once more, the Lord will accept the offerings brought to him by the people of Judah and Jerusalem, as he did in the past. At that time, I will put you on trial. I am eager to witness against all sorcerers and adulterers and liars. I will speak against those who cheat employees of their wages, who oppress widows and orphans or deprive the foreigners living among you of justice. For these people do not fear me, says the Lord of heaven's army. I am the Lord and I do not change. That is why you, descendants of Jacob, are not already destroyed. Ever since the day of your ancestors, you have scorned my decrees and failed to obey them. Now return to me and I will return to you says the Lord of heaven's armies. But you ask, how can we return when we never have gone away? Should people cheat God? Yet you have cheated me. But you ask, what do you mean? When did we ever cheat you? You have cheated me of the tithes and offerings due to me. You are under a curse, for your whole nation has been cheating me. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse so there will be enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord of heaven's army. I will open up the windows of heavens for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it. Put me to the test. Your crops will be abundant for I will guard them from insects and diseases. Your grapes will not fall from the vine before they are ripe, says the Lord of heaven's armies. Then all nations will call you blessed for your land will be such a delight, says the Lord. Of heaven's armies. You have said terrible things about me, says the Lord, but you say, what do you mean? What have we said against you? You have said, what's the use of serving God? What have we gained by obeying his commands or by trying to show the Lord of heaven's armies that we are sorry for our sins? From now on, we will call the arrogant blessed for those who do evil get rich and those who dare God to punish them suffer no harm. Then those who feared the Lord spoke with each other, and the Lord listened to what they said. In his presence, a scroll, scroll of remembrance was written to record the names of those who feared him and always thought about the honour of his name. They will be my people, says the Lord of heaven's armies. On the day when I act in judgment, they will be my own special treasure. I will spare them as a father spares an obedient child. Then you will again see the difference between the righteous and the wicked, between those who serve God and those who do not. Malachi, our final book in this uh, series that we've gone through and our final minor prophet, as we can see here on our little uh, diagram. Um, Malachi is often, well, it is kind of linked with uh, Zechariah and Haggai, uh, there is a tomb, I believe, um, that you can can potentially go and visit that's meant to be uh, the tomb of those uh, three prophets. We have taken a long journey uh, through the Old Testament and sometimes it's been a bit difficult. Uh, we've had a lot of language to do with God and God's fury and God's anger that 
I know that a lot of you struggle with and I know that I struggle with. And yet, persistently, what we see in the Old Testament is an outreaching from God, is a hand outstretched towards us. Come back. Come back into fellowship with me. Please, just act justly. Act right. Act the way that I have created you to be. Be that that people, be that creation, that beautiful, uh, beautiful creation. And so we come with all that as Christians. In the very start of this chapter, it feels like Jesus, doesn't it? Obviously, we know that for a Jewish reader, that's not what they understand. But for us, when we look at at all that they're promising, this new temple, this new age, this this wonderful uh, age and person, uh, we see Jesus. And we come as having, having met Jesus personally through the Holy Spirit and try and find our place in this narrative because I think that's so significant. We can't just abandon abandon the old testament or abandon the gospels or abandon you know those those stories of god's faithfulness because they teach us who we are they locate us within the story of god's creation god's outreaching to the world and so i hope that this time and these reflections over the past few months have been helpful and interesting to you and while we move forward onto something new, I hope that this will stay with you and sit with you. And those those things that you might have gleaned or might have been challenged with, you won't just uh, leave aside, but we will all continue to wrestle with them. Because that's the exciting, important part of our faith, is to wrestle continuously um, with, with text and with our understanding of God. We are all uh, theologians. We are all studying and understanding Uh, God in our devotion and our worship. So let's have a prayer. God, we want to pray for blessing upon us, for a blessing upon our understanding. Thank you for what you have revealed through scripture. Thank you that you are a God who does not give up on us, but continually reaches out to us. And we see that through scripture. We pray that we might be a people who continue to learn, who all the time are exploring our faith, stretching ourselves. Thank you for what we've learned and we pray that those messages that are significant to us at this time will stay with us, that you would continue through the wonderful Holy Spirit within us, teaching and transforming us. Let us, God, be formed by our worship and study of you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.